for any person that encounters ball screens. Y'all need to understand how you must navigate ball screens, one, and two, the best ways you can set up those screens. And I see a lot of players at all levels struggle with doing both of those things. So pay attention to these next few clips, right? So now you got in. And one of the most underrated moves to set up your screens is utilizing an in and out. Because pay attention what this in and out is gonna do to Dante Exum. When Ant gets here, notice, in and out, Exum literally gets into a hop. He now decides to put all his weight on both his legs. And when you play bilaterally with your legs side by side, now you can, out, you can no longer move or you're going to have to redistribute your weight from one foot so you can push off and then take a step to get somewhere else. So now you're going to be a step late. And with the screen already being right there, it's just making this way tougher than it already is, right? So now your ability to navigate is going to be tremendously hindered. Ant is able to get to that left side where he's got to drop, and he's able to get that shot right there to drop into the rim. So now pay attention with Luca, right? Little different scenario. Ball screen is taking place towards half court. You're about 43 feet out right now, right? They're about 43 feet out. And so now understanding this as a defender, when you have a ball screen this high, you'd never chase over from this far unless it's like a Stephen Curry or Dame Lillard who will pull from that far, right? But this is Luka, and he's not going to pull from that far. So now you go under because you could beat him to the other side of the screen without putting yourself in a vulnerable position, right? You go under that first time, and now you get a re-screen because the goal of the offensive player now is to get you to chase over because that's how you get the advantage, right? And so now what's going to end up occurring after he goes underneath on that first one, Luka's now going to have to set up this re-screen. And so what is Luca going to use just like Ant did last time? Notice, in and out. And now that time, he got a shift. He just didn't get him to stay stagnant and stay in one spot. He got him to actually shift out because all the movement that's already going on. Understanding that I'm already leading him this other direction, right? So hit him with that in and out. He drops right directly underneath that screen. And now by me being closer up on that three-point line, I'm in attack range and I could actually shoot this shot just a couple feet behind the line. And although I missed that one, Derrick Jones Jr. on that hustle t tips this right back out top of the key, and I get that bucket. Another one to start this game off. And now I want to talk about this next concept where we've seen in that last one just a little bit, which is the rescreening, right? The rescreening, rescreening, rescreening. Y'all got to begin to make this a habit. Anytime, like I said before, you see a defender go underneath the screen, you get a rescreen, right? And this is where you also have to communicate to your big because your big also has to know. The way we get our advantage is by getting someone to chase over. So if they don't know that if someone goes someone goes under, that they have to set a rescreen and they decide to always hard roll or go soft roll or leave or pop, whatever it is, tell them to set that out of the screen because we need to get them to chase over, right? So now what ends up occurring? And got that first one, sets another one, pay attention. PJ watched him on that pinch all the way to the nail because he has to help. He has no choice but to help, right? Because he got so far down with with Josh Green behind him that he has to help over because Daniel Gafford's in that drop. Now McDaniels drifts down towards that wing, is able to get that open three. Pay attention to these rescreens. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. P.J. Washington now, right sideline. Underneath on that first one. Rescreen, I need you to chase over. Boom. And this just leads me perfectly to what my game is, if you're in. Empty corner, cleave on a drop, dribble pull up right there in the midi. I see no hands, give me that shot right there off the glass. Bucket. Now this is another one. This is a big time bucket as well, right? You got 47 seconds left now in the game. This is a big time bucket. Talking about the same exact concept. Pay attention. Derrick Jones Jr. guarded from the half court line. Rudy Gobert on the screen, underneath. Sets another screen, still high up, underneath sets the other screen again now we get him to chase over and what does ant now have with the drop pull up in the mid-range if you could utilize anything that you got from these past couple of clips if you're playing against a drop most importantly if you're playing against a drop dribble pull-ups in that mid-range but also make sure you make it a habit for you to go and get a re-screen when someone goes underneath your screen and improve your ability to shoot behind those screens in case they do end up going underneath again when they, when you do get in range and when you are around that three-point line 
being able to use that screen, hide behind it like you've seen Luka do with Ant, add that shot as well to your bag if you do oftentimes get into pick and rolls. If you oftentimes get into pick and rolls, and that's the most important part. Understand your game, understand your role. Don't do what you want to do. Don't add the skills that you think are cute and you wish to have. Do what is in alignment with your own game. That's the most important part. I still got to talk about setting up screens, this time with Kyrie. Understand now that he has Jaden McDaniels on him in this game primarily, right? So pay attention to how he's going to set up this screen with McDaniels on him. Just watch where he goes. Watch his direction, right? He's going to his right side. Kleber going to set a screen. Boom, he works him right. So then Kleber flips that screen. He gets back left. Pull up going to that left side bucket, right? He worked him to that right side. Kleber flipped that screen. Brought, and then used that screen going to his left side. Got that bucket, right? Pay attention now. Once again, on this play, once again, you got McDaniels coming over from the middle of the floor. You go to that right side. Boom. And then after working them to that right side, you get that screen to the left. Now you split that with right there. Go bear, pull it for that midi, misses it. That's all on him. Very makeable look for Kyrie. I gotta, I gotta also talk about this aspect of screening, which is not even having to really set anything up, but just having two of the most important things you really do need in screens, which is having patience and then having a good nonverbal communication and understanding with your screener, right? And so ultimately, understand this situation right here with Kyrie and Derrick Jones Jr. Pay attention, because Kyrie's not gonna do no setups. He's just gonna wait for Derrick Jones Jr., flip that screen to that middle, Conley waiting on this other side, and now boom, I go right. He just waited on Derrick Jones Jr., got the angle he needed on McDaniels, got into lane, boom, floater, two right there out the gate for the game. Pay attention going forward, right? Another opportunity, right? in the middle of the floor. Notice McDaniels' position. He's square. He's not leading him left. He's not leading him right. He's not leading him no direction. He's not trying to force anything. He's straight up, squared up, right? So now you got Kleba with the step-up screen from this left side. And all he does is wait. All he does is wait. Kleba gets there. Boom, he has to navigate around. He splits that with Gobert, gets to his right side. He just ends up smoking that layup, right? Missed us all on him. Defense wasn't great. He just missed. Now notice his next possession as well. Now we coming off the triple threat with it. He gets his catch. Stops. That's the most important part of that whole play. He stops. Because by Kyrie simply stopping as soon as he got this catch, notice what it does to McDaniels as well. McDaniels now stops. Right? It kills his momentum and his speed and the force he could generate to get over that screen and be able to break everything up. But by getting him stationary, he doesn't have that force, one. And two, it allows Derrick Jones Jr. to be able to find McDaniels' body when he is setting the screen. So that patience is vital. It's vital. So now what occurs? He goes to his left side. Towns tries to hedge. He don't want that three. He's been breaking all game. Drops it down to Gafford. He right there gets that bucket down low. Now with Rudy Gobert, you've seen him split it twice, I believe. We've seen him split it twice. He waits for this first screen by Luka, handoff here by Gafford, practically the same situation as a pick and roll, right? Lane open to that left, I attack hard to that left side, dribble pull up right there, Gobert can't do nothing, give me that bucket. Patience, and then also being able to have, understand your screener, right? That nonverbal communication is going to be vital for any screen that you get. So sometimes you may not have to set it up, sometimes you'll just have to be patient. Peep this, peep this, peep this, right? So look, Luka gets this catch. Watch Luka. He calls up for a screen from Kleba. And as Kleba gets closer, watch the gravitational pull. Kleba gets closer, Conley pulls into that paint. So now the second that Luka takes this dribble right here off the screen, he knows that Conley is the tag man. So he fires that straight to Derrick Jones Jr. in that corner, and he's able to get that three. No time wasted. We just get our buckets. That right there is how you repick pick and rolls. You already know how Gobert's going to guard it. You already know how Ant or McDaniels will guard it when they're guarding the ball. I got to read that weak side because that extra defender is going to take away what I will have when I come off the screen. So now I got to be a step ahead and play chess and not checkers.